Hello, my name is Chris Isayan and I'm certified Azure Architect. Recently, I was asked to set up and configure API management in Azure. While configuring, I found some challenges specifically in the areas of securing the backend or the app service and configuring OAuth 2.0. So I thought it would be a good idea to put a tutorial together where I focus in in the areas where the Microsoft documentation was not clear. Let's get started. Before we start configuring resources, let's visualize our objective. On your left hand side, you're seeing simplified user to system and system to system interaction. In short, we want the users to be interacting with the Azure API management. And if somehow they discover the endpoint for the app service and they want to access it directly, we will give them access denied. Here's a summary of all the steps involved. As you see, there's a lot to be covered. So I would strongly recommend that you go to the Microsoft documentation. And this is the document that I followed for my tutorial. Follow this, do the steps and only refer to my tutorial if you have issues or you need clarifications. And if you just wanted to stand up a protected app service without an API management, you would follow this document. To save some time, I'm going to use one of my APIs to deploy. One thing I would recommend is that you implement the Swagger. This will save you a lot of time down the road, okay? So let's publish this. Now that it's published, let's test this. Okay, as you see, it returned 200 with some data. Next, I will be importing the app service into API management. As you see, Microsoft made life easy. I can just pick my app service plan and import it, but I could also go through the open API since I already have a swagger, but let's take the easy route. Okay. And for the suffix, I'm just going to enter demo, let's say three, create. Now, if I was testing the API endpoint using Postman, I would get access denied because of the subscription key. Let's remove that requirement from the settings. Okay. Let's try our Postman again some time okay now at this point I have both of my endpoints the API endpoint and app service endpoint wide open to the public our job or our objective is to secure both endpoints using OAuth let's review the items that you will need to secure your app service endpoint as well as the API endpoint so you definitely need your tenant ID you need set of endpoints for OAuth 2 as well as the callback for your app service. You need the app ID for your app service, the scope, and don't forget to put that default at the end. You will also need your uh, client ID. This is the test ID that you're going to test your configuration. And you will need the policy that you need to configure your API endpoint. Now let's register the backend. Let's go to the manifest and update the access token accepted version to two since we plan to use OAuth version two and save that. Okay, now let's add a scope. Before we do that, we need to set the app ID URI and save that somewhere for future use. Add the scope, name it to something and these are just for display purposes. Okay, for the backend app, let's enable the ID token from Authenticate. Now go back to your app service and from authentication, click on add identity provider, click on Microsoft 
and we're going to pick an existing registration and pick the app that we just created a few seconds ago. Then click on add. At this point, our app service endpoint is secure. So if you try to send a request, you're going to get unauthorized. So the next step is to access our endpoint using OA 2.0. Let's register the client app that will be accessing the secure endpoint. Let's add permissions to the client app that we just created. And this is the scope. Go ahead, grant admin consent. Let's update the access token accept version to 2 since we're going to use OAuth 2 and save that for the client app. Next, let's create a secret or password for the client app. Okay, at this point, you've configured OAuth for the app service. Let's test it out. Let's get token. Proceed. Use this. Send it. And now we're getting data back, okay? Just one uh, minor thing, when you're entering scope, put dot .default at the end, okay? So at this point, only your app service endpoint is working, but not the API and Envoy endpoint. So if you try to trigger a request through your API endpoint, you will get permission denied. But if you send the token information, then you will get some data back. Now, if you were to use the same uh, client ID, then you would stop here and there's nothing else that you need to do. But if you want to use a different client ID, there's this couple of other steps that you need to take. Go ahead and turn on the managed identities for the APIM. In the real world scenario, you would go and create a new scope for this backend service and create another client app to register or implement that scope. But to save some time, I'm going to reuse the backend service or backend registration and the client registration that we did earlier on. To save some time, I've gone ahead and created a new OAuth. I'll just scroll down so you can see the values. Now let's go to the API settings. Scroll down to OAuth and pick the OAuth that we just created a few seconds ago. One last step, let's add a policy and then we are set to test our API M. Let's test our API M endpoint, get a token, send a request and we got data. This concludes the tutorial. And I have a couple of slides explaining the benefits of the APIM. I hope I demonstrated this first point at least. And if you need to dig in more, there's some references at the bottom and on the last page. Thank you for watching.